We have spent a lot of time on this YouTube channel talking about condos, the best condos, the worst condos, resale condos, pre-construction condos, but I haven't talked a lot about these hotel condo mixes where a percentage of the building is a hotel and the other percentage of the building is a private residence. And sometimes it's done on different floors and sometimes the units can be right next to each other. So in today's video, we are going to break down the pros and the cons of these types of buildings. Buildings. And shout out to Michael, who is a viewer of the channel, who sent me an email requesting this topic because I actually think this is really interesting. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom Story. I appreciate you being here. I run a real estate team here in the city of Toronto. And if you find any value at all in this video, all I ask is you hit that like button. And if you really like this video, make sure to subscribe. We are approaching 10,000 subscribers and the community continues to grow. If you would like to book a call with me, you can go into the first link in the description and book a buyer call, a seller call, or a discovery call to chat about the market. Before we talk about the pros and cons, let's give a few examples of these buildings. So you got the Four Seasons in Yorkville. You got the Shangri-La at 180 University. You got the Ritz-Carlton. Then you got the St. Regis on Bay Street. And then kind of older versions of this, and one of them was a conversion, is the King Eddie Hotel, where you can buy private residence as well, and one King West. These are the buildings where a lot of the professional athletes will live, right? When they're here on a short-term contract or something like that. Or a lot of celebrities will stay when they're here for TIFF or whatever else is going on in the city. What you're essentially buying here is a brand just as much as you're buying a property. Whether it's the Four Seasons, the Ritz, the Shangri-La, or the St. Regis, you're also buying the perception of something, right? And I know this sounds kind of funny to even say, but like, think about it. Does Rolex make a watch that is much superior to Omega? No, probably not in terms of the parts involved. Why do they cost double the amount of money? I got this uh, water mug, this Stanley mug, and I use it all the time and it's great. I don't know how much this costs. I got this as a gift, but I'm sure there's mugs way less than half the cost of this that do the exact same thing. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Stanley. So why are these the trend right now? Because they've done a really, really good job with marketing. And as human beings, we will pay to feel important. It just, it is what it is. I think we have to acknowledge that. Instagram in Canada just launched the verification where you can get the blue check mark for 20 bucks a month and you have to send a picture of your driver's license in. And they made millions and millions of dollars in one day just so people could feel important. Let's start with the pros. Number one is the amenities in most of these buildings, at least the luxury ones, are on another level compared to other condo buildings in the city. You have access to them just like the hotel residents are. I know some of these buildings have amenities that are just for the residents then the hotel side is split but they're usually kind of the upper echelon of what you're going to get in downtown condo living then there's the convenience factor so a lot of condos downtown do say they have 24-hour concierge but the type of concierge that you're going to get at this building is going to be on a much higher level it's going to be a first name basis they're really going to go out of their way to try and help you I don't believe they're just hiring a third party service like they maybe would in other buildings, but I can't confirm that directly. But just from my experiences showing in these buildings, it's always been really easy. They, they know what they're doing. They help you. There's never really any issues at all. And they treat the owners like guests of the hotel. And for me, the third and maybe the most obvious pros of these buildings is where they are located. They're extremely centrally located. You don't find other than maybe the Four Seasons because Yorkville has a lot of other condos where these other ones are located they're not in really the condo zone of where things are happening they're in the financial core where there's office buildings all beside you but they're right in the thick of things so you are really truly in the heart of the city where most of the condos are a little bit east or a little bit west now let's get to the cons of these type of buildings because frankly there are some big ones and this will stop a lot of people from maybe looking at these as options for themselves and the number one is price. Listen, these are not cheap. These buildings will sell anywhere from $1,200 to $1,600 a square foot. And not just the cost per square foot, but the units are typically a little bit bigger as well. Now, when I make that statement, I'm not talking about One King West and I'm not talking about the King Eddie. I'm talking about the Shangri-La, the Ritz-Carlton. If you look when these units come to the market, rarely is there anything under a million dollars. Anyways, they're usually starting higher. So the price point to even get in is in that upper echelon of luxury real estate. And maybe the most important part of this entire video is con number two. 
is the financing options that you have available. I actually asked a RBC mortgage specialist before I made this video and he told me that RBC does finance these buildings. Um, not always guaranteed, like it depends on what type of client you are with them if they're going to do it. Um, but I believe it's minimum 20% down, which kind of makes sense looking at the purchase price anyways. You couldn't really put less than that if it's over a million anyways. But there are a lot of big banks that just do not finance these buildings. And I remember when I started my career, it was like, yeah, you can buy in these, but you need 50% down payment because they're not going to give you an 80-20 loan to value like a traditional type of mortgage term that you would have. Now, this is slowly changing over time and more of the banks will finance it, but this is on a case by case scenario. So if you are interested in these types of buildings, I'd highly recommend talking to your lender beforehand, especially if you're going elsewhere to like a credit union or somewhere outside the big five banks because getting financing is not always a guarantee and the third con in my opinion is just potential noise right like hotel lobbies are where people go to have fun and i know in these buildings are separate entrances for the residents as well for the most part but there's people partying they're having a good time they're going to be louder in these buildings on a typical tuesday evening than they are going to be in a traditional residential condo i think these buildings are great options for certain people maybe if you're downsizing and you're moving into the city and you want that condo living lifestyle where it's easy everything is taken care of for you then these would be great options and then on the other side of things i have never ever ever had a first time home buyer ask me if they should be buying in any of these buildings or even actually talking about them at all because they just assume that it's likely out of their price range if you've had experiences living in any of these buildings i'd love to know in the comments please let me know we can use the comment section as a place that people can come here and learn more because i've never personally lived in these buildings I'm giving you this advice based on conversations I've had with people that have lived there, but I've never experienced it myself. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Tom Story, and remember, home is where your story begins.